Today we're going to be talking about a game that merges two of my favorite things together, card games and spooky stuff. And that game is called Cult of Cards, which has been having their first alpha playtest recently. I've been following Cult of Cards for a while now. I'm always interested in anything that blends horror with card games. It's even been my favorite type to play. Like in Magic the Gathering, I prefer black. In Pokemon, I like ghost types. And in White Schwartz, I use Chica. The blackest dies. The devil's eyes. You know, the stereotypical horror style in each card game. The alpha playtest just shows off part of the game, but it gives a good overall feel to how gameplay will be. So let's start things off with the opening video. When you boarded the bus, you thought your journey would be a quiet trip along empty back roads. But the engine broke down and you were forced to exit the vehicle and seek help with your fellow passengers. Little did you know, you were about to have the most terrifying night of your life. I love how it opens up like this. It really makes you feel like you're about to watch a classic horror movie. Whoever they got for the narrator is perfect casting. So the story starts off with a group of people on an overnight bus ride, which breaks down in perfect horror movie fashion, right next to a group of cultists who want to summon an evil demon. You may ask yourself, how can they get out of this? How can they fight off cultists and monsters? Well, that's easy. Card games. It's time to do 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 you can either play Cult of Cards solo or co-op with up to four players. I'll be playing this one through solo. Now, even though you're playing solo, you can still pick a team of four characters for your fight against the darkness. Your options are the driver, who looks ready to punch Diablo in the face, the tourist, the skateboarder, the cop, and the photographer, who is rocking a solid Devour shirt. Excellent taste. My first team going in consists of everyone except the cop. I'm sorry, friend. As cool as you look, I've seen enough horror movies to know that the person who seems the most capable to handle the situation at the start usually doesn't make it very far. You could be a liability to the team. The alpha test has three demons available to fight. The one skull leprechaun. See that? The buckles on me shoes? Why I'm a leprechaun. No, no, not not that one. The two skull executioner and the two skull brine beast. We're going to go in order, small fry first, and then finish it up with the brine beast. Now the game isn't difficult to pick up on. There aren't many varieties of cards to remember, so it's just learning the right order to do things, remembering where the demon is, and prioritizing certain abilities and gear. The leprechaun fight is a good one to learn the game with. It isn't super challenging, and I always learn better by doing. How does it play though? Well, if you're a fan of card games or board games, you're definitely gonna enjoy the gameplay here. The main goal of the game is to destroy the 10 altars, aka finding all 10 altar cards. You'll have a few tools to help you along the way, flashlights, hatchets, and charms along with a classic horror game first aid kit. You can also have each character start with a specific perk, either curious, fast, tough, well-prepared, or blessed. Each one has a unique ability that can aid you in the fight to come. Now that we have the knowledge about the cards and some perks for our characters, it's time to play our first game. Looks like things are about to get weird. The game starts the first time off by dealing out a card to each of the five locations, the farmhouse, cornfield, barn, tool shed, or well. Don't you dare. The cards are dealt face down, so you don't know what they are, and scattered throughout the deck are cultist cards, which if you reveal one, then your character gets knocked out. Can somebody help me? I'm down. One of these cards can also be the main baddie you're fighting. Each of them has a unique ability. In this case, Leprechaun's is when he's encountered. If the investigator collected a charm this turn, Leprechaun has no effect. <laughs> well, that's a weakness for him then. This'll be easy. I won't let some stupid Leprechaun... <laughs> This might be tougher than I thought. Well, since we've seen the defeat screen, what are the lose conditions anyway? Well, you either lose if all four of your characters are knocked out, or if there are no cards left in the deck. All right, focus back up. Turn one. Looks like we took a wrong turn somewhere. I'm gonna go in this match with a different mentality. I'm going to try and be a bit more careful and tactical, as one should be in card games. My plan was to utilize flashlights more often and be able to scan the locations before diving in. This caused me to play a bit slower as well, which is fine, because like I said, the Leprechaun fight is a great way to learn the game and see the flow of things. As I progressed, I could definitely tell I was getting the hang of the game a bit more, and I was able to speed up my plays, grabbing items and altars whenever I could. But you can't just rush in trying to grab altars. That's when the Cultists and Leprechaun can get you. As with any card game, the RNG is always going to either be with you or against you, but that's just luck of the draw. After a steady game, I feel a lot more confident, and I was able to crush the leprechaun in the end. Let's move on to the two skull ranked executioner. This one's ability is after every round the top card of the deck is revealed. If the executioner or a hatchet is revealed, a random character gets attacked. A bit tougher than the leprechaun fight, but the executioner is not able to stand up to my professional level card game abilities, and fell fairly quickly. A picture perfect finish. It's finally time for the boss of the alpha, another two skull rank, but this one's going to be a bit tougher. 
the Brine Beast. His ability is before every round, he discards top card of the deck. That's going to make these games go even quicker, and not in a good way. We've already defeated the Leprechaun and the Executioner, though. I'm confident we will be able to crush the Brine Beast. One minute, 37 seconds later. Guess this is what defeat looks like. It can't be. Have I hit a wall in this game? Can I not defeat the simple last boss of an alpha playtest? I don't think I can. I can't get enough shrines destroyed before the game ends. He's relentless. I think I'm just gonna have to quit. <laughs> Wait, who the hell am I kidding? I'm Jack Shippo. No enemy in gaming can defeat me. There has to be a way to win. There's always a way to win. With renewed vigor, I go into the last fight. A do or die situation. This calls for my last minute strategy, a plan I call the hashtagged blessed strat. All four characters go in with blessed. The plan is to bless flashlights and hatchets so I can clear multiple cards at once. Here we go, our last battle. Damn, a hatchet off the top at the start, I really needed that. I like to be able to scan every location just to at least see one card that's there, and at least I know the Brine Beast location. Easy clear, grab the hatchet and two altars. Two down, eight to go. Another two altars down at the cornfield. Four out of ten. There's three altars in the tool shed along with the cultist. I need to get in there with a hatchet. But I don't want to use up my cursed hatchet just yet. I'm going to save that for when I can take out multiple cultists at once. Taking a chance at the farmhouse. Ah, damn. Of course there's a cultist in there. I really want that altar, too. Use up the charmed axe, but it's worth it. Didn't know if that last card would have been a cultist or not. So that's three more altars in one go. Just three more to go. We're going to do this. There are only five cards left in the deck. Running a bit low on time here. Ooh, perfect combination. Altar and hatchet in the farmhouse. Let's go. Need to grab that. Ooh, and an altar and a charm in the cornfield, too. Ooh, I'm like, now this looks... I just need one more altar. Just one last one. This is it. The last chance I have. If I find a shrine in the barn, then I win. If I don't, the chances of victory are slim to none. It's a cultist. But I have my hashtag blessed strat to thank for the cursed hatchet, chopping down the cultist and letting us destroy the last shrine to secure our win against the brine beast. Next holiday, I'm going to the beach. I have to admit, I had a lot of fun with this game. The last round was a truly intense moment for me. The alpha has gotten me excited for Cult of Cards, so if you enjoyed this video, go wishlist them on Steam and join into one of the various alpha playtests they've been doing. I know I will be. And no, this is not a sponsored video from the makers of the game. I just really enjoy it, and they've also been some extremely friendly people. But if they ever did want to sponsor me, well, I think that would make me hashtag blessed.